Okay, I'm gonna attempt to do a check-in here. This is like my 10th attempt. I don't know if you, any of you have ever tried to produce content, but getting good lighting and good sound is, can be nearly impossible sometimes, so. What do you feel like's going down right now? Oh man, well, behind the camera is the most amazing water and birds are flying. I already seen them. some wild turkey. Turkey, yeah. How about those elk? Yep. An abundance of wildlife. Do you have any uh, thoughts on fishing today? Let's go. Let's do it. Oh, good morning. I look like I just rolled out of bed here. My hair is <laughs> atrocious. This is day three of a two week road trip fly fishing adventure. We've been in Greer, Arizona for three nights. It's been beautiful. I don't know how many elk we've seen. It's vulnerable putting your life out there for people to see. Like fishing, it requires a lot of trust. Life is always in transition, and now you too are a part of our story. Thank you, friends, for giving me a chance. There is much in store, and I look forward to an awesome year filled with adventure for all of us. But this part of the country has fantastic trout fishing. We're up at high elevation, like eight, nine, ten thousand foot elevation. We're in the White Mountains of Eastern Arizona, Right behind me is actually a private stocked big rainbow trout ponds. So we might end up fishing these waters behind us. I fished this area a year ago and had mediocre success. There's some big brown trout out here, some big cutthroat trout that are stocked up in Big Lake. I broke a big one off last year. I have a bit of a vendetta right now. I wanna get back after these fish. And it's hot, it's October 1st today. It's gotta be 80 degrees, full sun. This is a lake where some of the big fish cruise the shallows. We could catch a couple fish in here. I don't know uh, if we're gonna run into brook trout, cutthroats, there's some big fish in here. Probably some very medium and small fish too. So first legitimately hooked fish of the trip, right here, ladies and gentlemen. He's not huge. <laughs> but he's feisty. Nice little, I think it's a rainbow probably. I'm slowing down my strip a little bit. That seems to be helping. I've got to believe that there's some big ones in here. I know there are. Let's see if we can get a release here. Beautiful. If we come out of here without <laughs> breaking any rods, breaking any bones, that's really the goal. A couple of fish would be icing on the cake, no doubt, but Let's make this a really successful day. Just cool, calm, and collected. First hole of the day. Esther's going to take this hole. So just walk out another step or two. And then you can cast over your left shoulder. Let out some line. There you go. At the end of the day, this trip didn't render me any notable fish. Esther, on the other hand, woke up a lazy trout or two and made a splash as always. Esther's hooked up with a nice bow here, it looks like. There you go, you're doing great. I'm gonna net him for you here, us. We'll get a release. That's a three, four pounder, us.
So your job is to let him do his thing and you, you kind of, there you go. How's that feel? You want to make sure you keep him away from sticks. And he, when he starts to pull, yeah, yeah, but you try, you got to try to keep him away from those sticks. If you, okay. Oh, wow. That's a big one. Nicely done. Holy crap. That's a monster, S. All right, well done, S. Let's get a nice release on this guy. It's about a five pound rainbow. Beautiful, well done. That was a, a toad. That was an awesome fish. It was big, that was nice. Yeah. Well done. This part of Arizona is exceedingly beautiful and definitely God's country. And if you ever need a guide in this area, Cinda Howard with Fly Fish Arizona and Beyond will impress you with her kindness, hospitality, and her knowledge of these unique micro ecosystems. We highly recommend Cinda as a guide and as a friend. They don't have this. You know, when I came from Texas, when people said, oh, you can just camp here, I'm like, what? Nobody's going to shoot me? You know? Yeah. <laughs> in Texas, you can't just camp anywhere. And it was amazing to me, all of this land that you could fish and hunt and camp. You know, I'm looking at that side over there where that foam line goes against that bank oh. and against that structure. Have you seen, personally, any of the Mexican gray wolves? I have. Tell I me a little seen, bit about that. So... The first time I saw him, I walked, it was on the West Fork of the Black on the upper section going towards the reservation and we started having something bark at us and we were in an area where there's no way, other way you could get to it from where we were and there was a pack of wolves. Um, I called Game and Fish about that and they said, you know, they're probably just telling you, hey, we have a den here, don't come any closer and we didn't. I've had several across the road in front of me. I've had seen some farther down on the West Fork of the Black. There's a really high population up in that big lake, West Fork of the Black area, Greer area, um, a lot of Mexican gray wolves. And there's probably, they say, I think about 130 right okay. now. Okay, are they all tagged? Or They're not. They are They say that they have wolves tagged in every den, but they aren't all tagged. Okay. Wow, that's a good size one. It's maybe 16, give or take. Maybe long, a little longer. So adventure on, and we'll see you on the next episode of Fish and Fly with Gus. Spend some time, log some hours on the river with Cinda, who's uh, just a, such a sweet gal. Has so much uh, fly fishing guiding experience. She's got a lot of great stories to tell, and she's uh, really helping Esther to uh, understand how to mend her line properly. Oh! There you go, got that on camera. <laughs> She's good. <laughs> that was awesome. She was in the middle of a technical uh, instruction and... And we got snagged all at the same time. <laughs>